When you think Harley Davidson engines from the 1930s and 40s, most people gravitate right towards knuckleheads, flatheads, 45s. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on an unknown line of Harley Davidson engines produced during the depths of the Great Depression. Now, Harley Davidson motors, as long as we can remember, have really been harvested for all sorts of reasons. And if you guys take a look at the plow right over here, now right in our Homemade America exhibit, and all this week on Drive for History, guys, we're focusing on homemade machines using Using motorcycle engines as their inspirations. Harley Davidson engines, really, as long as we know, uh, have been harvested out of their motorcycles and used for all sorts of purposes. So, fully uh, uh, documented all inside of our Homemade America exhibit are numerous examples of Harley Davidson single cylinder and JD type of engines pulled from their machines, put into plows tillers, ice saws, ice sleds, even made into air pumps. So just about anything you can imagine an engine being used for, Harley Davidson engines have been adapted to. This example is a pretty neat one. 1911 Harley Davidson single cylinder, four horsepower job, noted as a 1911 and its VIN number right there, 9426, that'd be uh, mid 1911. Uh, this one was harvested out of a, a belt drive, single cylinder example, uh, and put uh, to use inside of this plow. So the plow is actually quite a remarkable machine. Uh, the tongs on the back, there's just the two of them. There's actually a full clutch assembly here and a gear reduction device that allows this thing to travel at a couple different speeds. Uh, we've never run this thing here at the museum uh, but the motor itself, we just noticed, uh, turns over excellent, has great compression, uh, might be a subject of, of uh, some work on a future Drive for History segment, we'll have to see. Uh, but today, guys, what I wanted to talk about was the stationary Harley-Davidson power unit. Uh, Harley-Davidson in 1932 produced an unknown number of these uh, for industrial uses. So uh, 21 and 23 cubic inches, they actually made uh, four different types of these and it's basically loosely based off the Briggs and Stratton type of engine um, it really designed or, or I guess redesigned by Harley Davidson uh, for external power use so uh, again small displacement 21 and 23 cubic inches now these things are so incredibly rare to see one of them period uh, at this day and age is you know it's just nearly impossible to turn one of these things up here at the museum we actually have four of them uh, we've got one of each type so they made the 21 and the 23 cubic inch jobs but as you can see they made them both with kickstart and they made them both with uh, electric start and electric start hand crank here so You've got the big one and the small one, both kickstart, and the big one and the small one, both hand crank. So one of the primary differences between the big engine and the small engine, uh, displacement wise, it was just stroke, uh, but actually construction of the engine, they actually had the smaller ones, had the aluminum engine cases, they were quite a bit lighter. The large ones had the cast iron engine cases. So uh, heavy, heavy unit, uh, but really sturdy, low compression. These things are right around three and a half, four to one compression. I was reading the horsepower curve on on uh, some of our literature on these machines and horsepower was in between three and a half and four horsepower they made upwards of 12 pounds of torque so uh, perfect to run things like uh, small line shafts drill presses your washing machine plows tillers you name it so uh, just a, a neat neat engine and one that most folks never knew Harley Davidson ever produced so uh, pretty simple setup it's an L head flathead type of design uh, uses the small Schebler automotive type Type carburetor although it's far too small for a uh, an auto uh, Schebler updraft carburetor the magneto ignition is right here inside of this box so this is a sealed box uh, this thing could be operated rain or shine um, Harley Davidson cast right here on the cam cover. So, and again, they made some of these in aluminum and some of these cast iron. The one that we're gonna be cranking up today is the cast iron variety, uh, cast kick pump here, kick, kick arm here, and you can see the kick gears in excellent condition. I can't imagine that these things would have had much use at all. Uh, they, almost every one of them looked to be in like new condition 
few modifications here and there over time. These two of them have had new exhaust manifolds uh, put on. Uh, a couple of them had their carburetors changed around. Uh, this one here is in relatively untouched condition, uh, and we're going to fire it up here for you momentarily. Now, each of these engines have been inside the wheels uh, through time collection uh, for different amounts of time. Uh, this one probably has been at WTT the longest. My dad actually got this engine uh, from a, a famous racing tuner, Ralph Burnt. Ralph Burnt, we're going to teach you all about Ralph coming up in our Drive for History Class C racing segment next week. But uh, Ralph was one of the, the premier tuners of the KR Harley Davidson racing era. So Harley Davidson raced KRs from 1952 through 1969. Uh, privateers raced them even into the 70s. Uh, the Harley Davidson KR, 45 cubic inch flathead. Uh, three, uh, excuse me, four speed transmission. Uh, Ralph Burnt was the premier guy when it came to tuning KRs. Four time national champ, uh, Carol Ress Weber. All of his bikes were tuned by Ralph Burnt. Uh, so, really, one of the wizards of flathead engine design from Harley Davidson. Uh, this engine, great story, was given to Ralph by one of the executives at the Harley Davidson Motor Company in exchange for racing information. So basically the way it would happen, Ralph would develop power uh, and Harley Davidson wanted a piece of that power and would offer them or would offer Ralph uh, rare and unique pieces out of the Harley Davidson collection uh, in order uh, to get some of that racing information. So we've got a few prototype engines here at the museum that were traded to Ralph over time. Uh, this one here we're going to be running for you in just a few short minutes. But if you come over and check out some of the literature, it's really, really neat that any of this survives in the first place. Here's, a, your, of course, your cover sheet on the Model F and Model G stationary industrial power units. Uh, a whole spec sheet. So specifications, dimensions, bore, stroke, displacement, horsepower, weight, what sort of piston and connecting rod assemblies they had, what sort of valves, the size of the valves, the clearances and everything. So all your pertinent information right on the motors producing power is right here. Uh, over on the other side, they've actually got the horsepower curve. The Model G was a little bit larger version than the Model F. Again, 21 and 23 cubic inches, and you can see that G topping out at a whopping four and a half horsepower. Uh, hold on tight, guys. So 12 pounds of torque there at the top. So we're going to get this thing cranked up, make a little bit of noise. You guys are going to hear the first Harley Davidson industrial stationary power unit run in I don't know how many years. So pretty easy setup as far as starting this thing up. We've got a fuel pet cock over here on and off just like normal. So we're going to turn that gas on, let that float bowl fill up for just a second. Uh, we didn't change the spark plug. We added a little bit of oil. Now, one of the neat things about this, again, most of this engine is very well enclosed and is set up in really a, a tight, compact unit to where there's not too much. Hey, you can pick this thing up, move it around the room, put it in your trunk, haul it to your neighbors. Uh, oil down here in the base, again, magneto. Uh, right here enclosed, uh, shield over the cylinder to keep you from, from grabbing on. Actually, first time I fired this thing up, I just happened to reach down and grab the plug wire, shock the heck out of myself. Uh, gas tank right here on top, so it's all gravity feed right to the carburetor. Uh, power source, I guess the power output is right here. So this one here has been set up with two V-belt dri drive pulleys, uh, again, to run just about anything you can imagine, guys. So run a big cooling fan run your washing machine, a tiller, a plow, you name it. So again, easy Kickstarter. We got a throttle right here. It's only 21 cubic inches. The choke is right over on this side. So what I'm gonna do is give it a couple kicks with the choke and hopefully this thing will be uh, popped off and running in just a couple kicks. One kick, two kicks, oh, three kicks, one more. Bring that throttle up a little bit. There we go. This thing is incredibly well balanced. Hardly any vibration at all. It runs smooth and cool. This thing would probably sit here and put along just like this all day. Throttle down here at the bottom.
unbelievable. It's been so long since that thing's run. It's got carbon blowing out the exhaust can. Uh, smooth, really even power. Um, runs far better than we expected it to run. We haven't tuned or dialed this thing in any. Uh, thing probably hasn't run in you know, 50, 60, maybe even 70 years. So exciting stuff. And you guys are some of the first to see it go. So uh, next time one of your buddies asks you if Harley Davidson ever made an engine that wasn't for a motorcycle, now you know the answer, guys. So thanks for tuning in on the drive for history. Homemade America all this week. We're going to be firing up great American ingenuity. And uh, make sure you guys are tuning in. If you're enjoying what you see, check out driveforhistory.com. Log on, make a contribution today, and help fuel the museum that runs. We'll see you.